Denso Oxygen Sensors – The Best Choice for Replacement Oxygen sensors have formed a critical component of engine management systems since the 1980s. As car manufacturers must comply with ever stricter emissions targets, the oxygen sensor measurements allow the engine control unit to perform an ever greater variety of tasks. In this animation, we will explore the sensor's two standard functions. The oxygen sensors are located in the exhaust system. They are designed to measure the oxygen content, which is directly related to the air-fuel mixture at the engine intake. The most efficient combustion is achieved when the air-fuel ratio is at 14.7 to 1 by weight, which is known as the stoichiometric ratio, or lambda 1. Consequently, oxygen sensors are usually called lambda sensors. Combustion of fuel creates pollutants that are harmful for both the environment and our health. The three most important pollutants that need to be minimized are carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen. These pollutants can be reduced using three-way catalytic converters that were introduced at the beginning of the 1980s. Catalytic converters use complex chemical reactions that convert the harmful emissions into less harmful substances. Because the catalytic reactions of each of these substances require different ideal circumstances, they never reach a 100% purification at the same time. Therefore, realistic targets are reached by compromising to an overall purification rate of 95% for these three pollutants. For this reason, it is most important that air-fuel ratio of the mixture going into the engine remains as close to lambda-1 as possible. Unfortunately, when an engine needs to produce more power, such as during vehicle acceleration, a rich mixture is required that has a slight excess of fuel. On the other hand, for light or zero-load conditions, such as coasting downhill, a lean mixture can be used that contains very little fuel. It is easy to understand that during dynamic driving conditions, it is not possible to constantly maintain a stoichiometric air-fuel ratio. Therefore, engine management systems have several options to accurately control the effectiveness of the catalyst converter under all kinds of varying driving circumstances. However, for all of such control strategies, it is crucial to precisely understand the levels of oxygen reaching the catalytic converter. This is why the oxygen sensor is one of the most important sensors of modern engine management systems. Now, how does the oxygen sensor work and how does it influence the air-fuel ratio? When cutting away the outer stainless steel skin, we can see the inner components. The tip of the sensor is where the sensing takes place, so it is sometimes referred to as the nose. Underneath the protective nose cover, we see the sensor element, which is made of zirconium dioxide ceramics. When the element reaches a temperature of typically 400 degrees centigrade or more, oxygen ions, which are electrically charged particles, are then able to diffuse through the element. This unique material property makes it possible to measure if there is a difference in oxygen concentrations on either side of the element. To ensure the sensor reaches the required temperature quickly, a separate ceramic heater is positioned inside the element. Within seconds, this heater can reach temperatures of over 600 degrees. The sensor's high-strength electrical wires that contain more than 35% stainless steel have a high temperature grade insulation and these wires are laser welded to the internal sensor electrodes for trouble-free long-life operation. At the rear of the sensor is a ventilation membrane. The membrane allows outside air to flow through to the internal side of the sensing element. The other side of the sensing element is exposed to the exhaust gas which has a very low oxygen content because most of the oxygen has been burnt during combustion. It was previously mentioned that oxygen ions can diffuse through the element, and they typically do so from higher to lower concentrations. Therefore, 
the oxygen ions diffuse through the element from the atmospheric side to the exhaust gas side. As a result, this flow of oxygen ions through the zirconium dioxide element produces a small voltage. When a rich mixture exists, the oxygen content in the exhaust gas is low, so there is a large difference in the oxygen content across the element. This produces a higher flow of oxygen ions, resulting in a high voltage signal of around 0.9 volts. But when a lean mixture exists, the exhaust gas contains more oxygen content, so there is less difference in the oxygen content across the element. The flow of oxygen ions is therefore reduced, resulting in a low measurement signal of around 0.1 volts. When the ratio passes from rich to lean, or from lean to rich, the measurement signal jumps rapidly between the high and low voltages, which is why this type of lambda sensor is also called a switching or jumping sensor. The voltage produced by the sensor is then passed to the engine management ECU, which adjusts the injected fuel quantity to try and maintain a stoichiometric air fuel ratio, or lambda 1. But because lambda 1 sits in between these rich and lean air fuel ratios, the fuel quantity is continuously adjusted up or down, which means the sensor signal is continuously jumping between the high and low values. Using this feedback signal from the O2 sensor to regulate the air fuel mixture is the classic function of the lambda sensor. The graph shows how fuel quantities are added or reduced based on the signals received from the sensor. And this continuous processing of monitoring the oxygen and altering the air fuel ratio is known as closed loop control. If there is a sense of failure, the ECU then ignores any signal being produced by the oxygen sensor, so the ECU operates using a predetermined open loop control. The engine operation is, however, less efficient and produces more harmful emissions. Also, open loop operation can increase fuel consumption by up to 25% or more. Additionally, when a richer mixture is required to produce engine power, the ECU will again briefly ignore the sensor signal. But the mixture can only remain rich for a limited period of time to prevent pollutant levels becoming excessive. The primary or regulating oxygen sensor is located upstream of the catalytic converter, which allows the oxygen content passing into the converter to be measured and then controlled. But to monitor the efficiency of the catalyst and its chemical reactions, a second or diagnostic lambda sensor is used. The diagnostic sensor is located downstream of the catalytic converter, and because 100% of the oxygen has been used for the catalytic reactions, the oxygen content is low and the signal voltage produced by the diagnostic sensor should always be high. In some cases, the ECU can test if this sensor is operating correctly. For example, when the catalyst converter now needs new supply of oxygen, the ECU will momentarily switch to a very lean mixture. The ECU can then check if the diagnostic sensor is able to measure this lean mixture. When the ECU receives a low voltage signal back, it knows the sensor is working properly. For most vehicles, catalytic converters are designed to last the lifetime of the vehicle. However, there are numerous problems and operating conditions that can decrease the effectiveness of the catalytic processes. Problems such as engine wear, poor fuel quality and many other faults can cause contamination of the precious metal surfaces on the honeycomb substrate within the catalytic converter. This will then prevent the oxygen from being absorbed and used for the chemical reactions. And the oxygen and untreated pollutants will therefore exit the converter without change. The oxygen content passing out of the converter will be the same as the oxygen content passing into the converter. Therefore, the signal voltage from both sensors will be similar, and the ECU will therefore have an indication that the catalytic converter is not functioning correctly.
So the regulating function of the pre-cat oxygen sensors and the diagnostic function of the post-cat sensors are the two standard functions that are common to all modern vehicles. But with additional exhaust gas after treatment systems now being used, more advanced types of oxygen sensors are also required that then enable engine management control processes to also be even more advanced. To ensure a lifetime of accurate engine management system performance, all major vehicle manufacturers around the globe rely on Denso's expertise to develop and manufacture ceramic oxygen sensors. This original equipment legacy is directly translated into the highly efficient oxygen sensor range of Denso aftermarket products that are available for every automotive professional.